What if I told you you could rewire your brain in a few hours, conquering your addiction, anxiety and bad habits, allowing you to live your best life? Some months ago I developed some bad anxiety surrounding eating at restaurants and I decided I was going to use hypnotherapy as a method for curing my anxiety. It's nothing like what you think it is. It's not being on stage and doing silly things whilst the audience is laughing at you. It's feeling safe and controlled and you can always come out of it. So I started my hypnotherapy journey. I did a total of three sessions, so three hours of hypnotherapy, and it helped me to completely overcome my anxiety. This video is about my experience, what my sessions look like, but also a little bit about hypnotherapy some common misconceptions and what the science says about it. Hey humans, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Ellie. I've recently graduated university and I have a passion for personal development and journaling. So if that sounds like something you would like, make sure you subscribe to join the journey. Hypnotherapy is often overlooked as a form of treatment. However, it has a much longer lasting impact than merely popping pills to cure your anxiety, addictions or bad habits. It fixes the problem straight from the source by rewiring your brain through suggestions and invitations from your therapist. I have found it to be a really beneficial treatment and I wanted to make this video to share my story so you can see if it's something that would be useful for you. So what is hypnosis? According to the science, hypnosis is a psychological procedure that can help to change how you feel and act. In hypnosis, you are put in a state of focused concentration that involves becoming less aware of your surroundings. In this state, you are more able to accept suggestions, also known as invitations. Your therapist will make suggestions that encourage you to move away from unhelpful beliefs towards more helpful beliefs. For example, if you mistakenly believe that you're a bad person, in hypnosis, the therapist will give you suggestions that help you to change that to a more reasonable belief that you are fine as you are. There are many misconceptions about hypnosis as well. Hypnosis in itself is not a therapy, but it can be a tool that facilitates the delivery of therapy in the same way as a syringe delivers drugs. Hypnosis does not make the impossible possible, but can help patients believe and experience what might be possible for them to achieve. Hypnotic states have been used for healing since humankind has existed, but because hypnosis can be misused for so-called entertainment and has been portrayed in the media as something mysterious and magical, supposedly out of the hypnotic subject's control, it has been viewed with distrust and skepticism by many health professionals. However, recent advances in neuroscience have enabled us to begin to understand what might be happening when someone enters a hypnotic state, and evidence is building for the use of hypnosis as a useful tool to help patients and health professionals manage a variety of conditions, especially anxiety and pain. Some conditions that hypnotherapy can help include PTSD, insomnia, anxiety, eating disorders, functional disorders such as IBS which have a large mental component, and improving memory for people who have suffered brain injury as well. So it's a really fascinating form of therapy and something that's really wide ranging in what it can actually help to achieve. So now let's get on to my experience and what my sessions were actually like. To get into the hypnotic state we started a breathing exercise where I had to breathe in for three through my nose and out for six through my nose. Eventually this ended up being breathing in for three and out for three and this helps you to get into the hypnotic state. I was in an armchair with both arms rested on the armrests. You just start to feel kind of sleepy and snoozy a little bit comfortable. Your body feels like it's sleeping, but your mind is kind of awake, but somewhat at rest as well. My therapist used my fingers to communicate. So she asked me to raise a finger if my answer was yes to one of her questions and to keep my finger still if the answer was no. This helped me to stay in my state of hypnosis and also gave her clear answers too, so she could direct the treatment and the conversation. She started off by asking my subconscious mind different questions, such as what age my anxiety had started and then asking my subconscious mind what it was trying to achieve. Often with anxiety, your brain has put it in place to achieve a certain objective, perhaps to protect you from certain situations. Hypnosis then allows you to challenge this anxiety and to think, actually, is it protecting me or is it just stopping me from enjoying my life? We start off by doing a visualization exercise. This might be a good time to mention that hypnotherapy works really well if you have a visual mind. So if in your mind's eye you can picture an image, then hypnotherapy is something that could work really well for you. 
I personally have had a lot of experience with meditation which is also really good for learning how to visualize stuff so I found it particularly easy but note that not everyone might be able to as readily and this could impact your ability to see success from your treatment. I started off by imagining a really high intensity anxiety situation making the image into a square and making it bigger and brighter until it was quite overwhelming and created a fairly negative response. We then created this exact same situation in a different square and this this time imagining the situation where I wasn't feeling the anxiety, so where I was really enjoying being with my friends, enjoying the food, enjoying the social situation and making this image a kind of direct parallel. So I had a negative image and a positive image. With these two images next to each other, I shrank down the positive image and put the negative image in the center. I then made the positive image the size of a stamp, placed over the negative image, made the negative image black and white and increased the positive image. I then did this five times to really ingrain the fact that it can conquer the anxiety and actually the positive situation without the anxiety is far more enjoyable for me and for my brain. At the end, of the first session, my therapist conditioned me to view the colour red as a symbol of my commitment to my treatment and to push me in feeling calmer and also really motivate me to conquer my anxiety. This honestly worked incredibly well. From the moment I stepped out of the therapy room, I started noticing small red signs such as fire safety notices, red buses, red fingernails, red bags, red signs. Red is honestly everywhere and it was a colour that I ended up using a lot Whenever I felt anxious, I just searched for the color red and I found that it instantly calmed me down. Between my first and second session, I had a week and in that week, I already felt so much better. I actually ended up getting a takeaway, which was a big first step for me and the improvements only continued. In my second session, we explored some key memories. In one instance, I was observing my younger self from the outside and I ended up joining in this memory as my current self. I walked into the memory, led my younger self away from the uncomfortable situation and out towards a path where golden light was waiting. Again, this is why it's useful to have some kind of visualization and maybe some practice in meditation as well. The golden light was there, my higher self was there and we all embraced and it just felt so loving and so safe and protected and it just made my younger self feel so much better. And I think hypnosis is such a powerful state that you can actually reconnect with your past versions of yourself and really heal those wounds and give yourself closure that your younger self didn't have at the time. The next exercise was to really imagine enjoying a situation that you find quite anxiety inducive. So for example, imagine you're really enjoying going out to eat with friends, enjoying all the sights, all the smells, all the tastes, all the textures, all the sensations, and just really visualizing yourself enjoying that. Visualizing all these things really helps your brain to understand that, you know what, you can actually enjoy those situations and it's actually beneficial for you if you do. Much like the red suggestion at the end of session one, at the end of session two, my therapist conditioned me to feel calm whenever I pressed my thumb and index finger together. This meant that whenever I was experiencing anxiety during the week, I could just press my thumb and finger together and instantly feel calm. Between session two and three, so another week in between the sessions, I actually managed to eat out with my friends, which was a huge achievement for me. So in the space of just two hours, I actually managed to conquer my fears and start eating out again. I won't lie and say it was perfect. I certainly felt anxiety before I went out. But once I was actually there, I felt completely fine, which was completely different to how I'd previously felt. So I could definitely tell that this was a therapy that was working for me. Session three was a lot more about consolidating what I had previously done in my first two sessions. We did another visualization exercise. So this time I was walking through a food court where I would maybe go and pick up food, smelling all the gorgeous smells and looking at everything, all the visual feast of what a food court is, all the sights and sounds and smells, and then just being really grateful of the wide selection of food I actually have on offer where I live. The fact that I can pick and choose what I want to eat on a given day. I then moved to a rural village somewhere else in the world where food security wasn't as great and they had to kind of eat the same thing every day and this made me really grateful for what I do have access to and actually made me feel like my anxiety wasn't as big as some other issues out there. I then was tasked to imagine a role model so someone I knew and how they would eat in a certain situation. So what would their body language be like eating out? What would they be acting like? How at ease would they be? What would their conversation be like? And so I had to imagine 
and visualize this role model I had in mind and think about all these things and then see if I could apply them to myself. We then finished the three sessions with an exercise on confidence, just instilling everything I had learned together. Overall, I found my three sessions of hypnosis to be incredibly valuable in helping me to overcome my anxiety. I'm now in a place where I feel completely fine going out to eat and I've had some amazing times with friends and family too. It's definitely a certain niche, so make sure to contact people local to you to see if they can actually help you out with whatever issues you are facing. My therapist specialised in general anxiety and also helping with addiction such as smoking so just make sure you check that they can help you with what you're looking for. I hope this video has debunked some myths and maybe demystified hypnotherapy as a form of treatment. By sharing my experience I hope I've made you feel a little bit at ease if it is something you're wanting to consider. I personally have found it really beneficial so that's why I wanted to share my experience and share what the sessions look like so you kind of understand what the treatment actually is like. By rewiring your subconscious mind you can really really change and impact your life for the better. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever tried hypnosis, what you've tried it for and how you found it, or if you're willing to give it a go after watching this video. I would really love to hear your thoughts. Make sure you subscribe to my channel here and you can watch my most recent video here. I hope to see you in the next one but in the meantime all the best and lots of love. Bye!